What's up, everybody? Good morning. Welcome to a Tuesday edition of Morning Scone presented by Brock. Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. Five locations in the greater Baton Rouge area. Of course, their main location there on uh, Blue Bonnet near Perkins. Awesome people. All the subspecialties. If you're in Livingston, remember their Livingston location as well. Uh, I-12, get off at Walker. Uh, hang right, about a half mile down on the right. There they are. Uh, game day, y'all. What you say? Game day. LSU and UK. Tigers in Lexington. Let's talk about it, y'all. Get y'all's Q&A. I a ton of stuff. Uh, Everett email. Good morning. Tiny Keller. Good morning. Trivia Carter. What's up, Trivia? Glad you got the notification on time today, man. Uh, Mark Allen. What's up? Kurt Taylor. Good morning. Brian Ashcraft. Scott Bork. Chuck Sanchez. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Ben Clark, LSU versus Kentucky. People feeling basketball right now, man. People are feeling this basketball team. Dusty Revere, good morning. Um, I love it, man. I'm so glad that they're doing well and people are excited about it. P Max been jumping the past couple of Saturdays, uh, a couple of road games now, but man, you go get this one today. Uh, Tom Bruyard, Josh Long, good mooning, good mooning, good mooning. What's up, Dad? Good morning, Leroy Blanchard. Uh, Shelby Kelly. Uh, morning, Matt. Who's on the call tonight? That's a good question, man. Uh, I haven't gotten the game notes yet, and they always list who the TV call is on the game notes, and I don't know who it is. That's a good question. I don't know. Um, let's see if I can find that out. Robert. What? You want Robert? Do you want Robert? Uh, 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 uh. What? What? Robert. Robert. Okay, let's go see Robert. Wow. We got a blast from the past today, y'all. We got a Robert request. How about that? How about that? Meow, meow. Meow, meow. Let's see Robert. Meow, meow, meow. Okay. Meow. You want to come sit with Daddy while we, while we wait for Robert to come on the TV? Yeah, yeah. Ma, ma, ma. Meow, meow, meow. What you meowing about? Meow. Meow, 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 meow. Let us have some pie. Daddy, mommy car. Mommy's car. Never heard of it. Are you sure mommy has a car? Okay. What? What? Hey, Jerry said, who's the man? Drew's the man. What? Oh, you want Robert. You said Robert. Let's see if we can find old Robert. Let's see. Oh, he's still in our favorites. There he is. Oh no. Commercials. I'll tell you what. There you go. All right. Let's see how long this lasts. My poor requested Robert this morning. Chandler Tulis, Julio Mendez, good morning. Scott Porch, uh, good morning. Haven't tuned in in a while. Scott, where you been, man? Come on, you don't get, Scott, you don't get to not watch. That's a rule, dog. You gotta watch every day. That's a rule. I'm just kidding, but kind of. But kind of serious. Uh, let's see. Bob Cooper, good morning. Justin Rays, good morning. Matthew Shelley, what's up? Kirk Taylor, dude, listening to AFR on the night shift on the watch app. It was short, 40 minutes, cut off during the white. Huh. I don't know what happened, man. Um, I will. I will ask. I don't know what. Uh, I don't know why it cut off. Um, I wonder if the if the sh the recording of the show is there. Like you know, you can go back. You can always go back and watch the show in its entirety. I wonder if it's there. If it if it cut off live or if the recording cut off too. Interesting. Okay. Good looking out, man. I'll check on it, Kirk. Thank you. 
Uh, David Childers, Dusty Revere, good morning. Uh, LSU, Kentucky. This is Super Tuesday, man. This is on. This is on ESP. <clears throat> this is on ESPN. Um, Kentucky is like an eight and a half point favorite in this ball game. So um, big stage for LSU. Big opportunity, man. Uh, whoops. There we go. Big stage, big opportunity for the Tigers. You know, eight and a half point underdog. No, we'll see how they do in Lexington tonight in Rupp, tough environment. Um, you know, I, I'm going to backtrack. I'm not going to say tough environment. I think I've talked about it here as well. I just, Rupp is one of those things where you're, like, look, LSU hasn't won there in 10 years. The, o, the 09 team that won the SEC with Trent in his first year was the last team to win there. Um, the 06 team won there as well. But Rupp's one of those things where I can't remember if we talked about it here or if we talked about it on AFR. Rupp is uh, it's big, but it's also like a civic arena. It's not an on-campus gym. It's gym. Uh, you know, it's a, it's like the River Center in Baton Rouge, for example. Um, it's off campus. It's like in the downtown area. It's it doesn't look at all like a basketball arena. It just looks like a big cement block. Um, so it's kind of surreal in that regard. And you have a lot of old guard fans there that don't make a lot of noise. Like, it's not like one of those really packed, loud, raucous type venues. Um, it, it's tough because it's big and they can be loud moments. Um, but more so just the team you're playing, right? I mean, they got really good players. So it's people have always asked, you know, why is like, why is it so tough to win at Florida? Well, Florida's, you know, football, Florida usually has really good players, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's in part why. Uh, Joey Painich, good morning. Uh, so I'm not, I hope the environment doesn't swallow them up. Like that, that environment at Houston earlier this year, that looked. Drew? What's the matter, bud? Oh, they got a commercial. Hey, use your words. Use your words, baby. Come tell daddy. Uh, let's see. What? Huh? Oh, man. Oh, man. He ran here to go, oh, man. And he's gone again. Uh, let's see. Julio, good morning, Matt and Drew. Can't wait for this game tonight. I hope so, too, man. It'll tell us a lot about him. And, you know, they've got very little to lose tonight. LSU does. Go up there. Shoot your shot, man. Robert, my man, the nerd. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's see. Trey Butler, good morning. Craig Duga, Matt, get Pat Bradley on AFR today. He's Wicked Knowledge Bull on Hoops. I can reach out to Pat and see if we can get him on. I always like talking to Pat. Uh, and the Wicked Knowledge Bull party. He's from, uh, he's from uh, Massachusetts, the Boston area. How do you, like... To go from Boston to Fayetteville. Uh, but Pat's great. He's, he's a really good dude. Um, he's, good, he's good. I mean, yeah, he's he's good on, on hoop, good on TV, good on radio. Uh, Sam Dixon, good morning. James Seymour. Good morning, James Tyrone. Uh, Megan Boyce Hurst, Matt's dressed in Kentucky colors. No, I'm not. I'm dressed in Brock colors this morning. Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. Supporting my people. And hopefully y'all will like their uh, their page. It's, t it's uh, tagged in this post. So if you would uh, now and you know, like it and come back or, or whenever we're done. Oh, I got to hit the share button as well. Hopefully y'all join me in that endeavor. Um, see, a lot going on. What else you want to talk about? There's a, God, yesterday, I love days like Dad yesterday. Dad's show. This is Dad's show. Very good. Robert. Robert. The only, th how about that, Megan, by the way? All right, dude, we'll see you. Um, yeah, I loved, uh, yesterday was awesome on AFR, man. I just, I love days like that. You know, we had, uh, we were recapping LSU Auburn with the whole Anthony Davis saga over the weekend. Will he play? Won't he play? Um, uh, you know, all the reaction to Magic Johnson saying they didn't negotiate in good faith. Saints hired a new special teams coordinator, um, or special teams coach, uh, LSU announced LSU baseball announced the yards, so a new beer and wine options for baseball, um, similar to the shoot at Tiger Stadium. Um, 
Davin Cotton entered the transfer portal for LSU. Uh, defensive lineman, it's man, just a busy day. It's one of those days. We talked a lot about the AAF. I know we talked about the AAF here over the weekend on a on morning scone, but so yesterday was great. Man, I love shows like that. When you walk up and you got ten different things that could be your lead. So I think I will talk about. Um, Hi. Happy birthday. Oh, happy. Happy what? Hi. Hey, hi. Hey, Drew. Hey, Drew. 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 Can you use your words, please? Good job. Elmo Duck. Elmo Duck? Do you want Elmo Ducks? I thought you wanted Robert. I thought you were watching Robert in there. Hmm? Who is that on the TV? Who is that? Is that Drew? Hey, no, 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 no. We don't do fussy face. We use our words, baby. We use our words. Dad show. This is Dad show. Very good. Elmo Ducks. You want Elmo Ducks? Happy birthday. Do you want Elmo Ducks? Happy birthday. No, no, no. Do you want your word? Do you want Elma Ducks? Say, Daddy, I want Elma Ducks. What book? You got Robert. You go get him. Go get that big nerd. Uh, Blake Sagan, good morning. Um, what you think about this game today, man? Get out of here and put Drew on. <laughs> That's, oh yeah, there you go. Um, the record. Did y'all? Uh, did y'all catch the uh, the Chris Nakamoto investigation yesterday on AFR? You know, you take chances at bits like that. It's like it strikes and gutters. For those that don't know, we um, we sent a Chris Nakamoto, the investigative reporter from WBRZ. We sent him to the Amy Barber Shop to uh, to investigate. Uh, the Amy Barber shop, and um, uh, we used a bunch of lines from uh, from the Barber shop scene from Coming to America, and then from the movie Barber Shop. Uh, Hal Dane put the whole thing together. Nakamoto voiced it. They, it was it was really really funny, um, and I'd say like about ninety percent of the reaction was good. The ten percent, of course, from the huddle and other dorks that had no sense of humor didn't like it. Hey, you want Emma Ducks? You want Elma Ducks? Elma Ducks. There you go. Elma Ducks. Back to old tried and true. All right. Um, anyway, if y'all missed it, y'all gotta go check it out. It was funny. Uh, hey, Aunt Mary, good morning. Sam Dixon's today. Today's the day. Will Wade versus Apollo Creed. That's hey. Okay, so who is that? That's who is that that has that question? It's a really good Matt Lusto. You know why the stream on the app doesn't allow landscape viewing on iOS devices. So I don't know why it doesn't do it in the app, but if you just go to 104, like if you go to your like your internet browser on your phone and go to 1045ESPN.com and hit watch, then you can watch it in landscape. I don't know why it does that. Uh, I've, I have asked that question. I don't know that anybody followed up, um, but since you sent that, that's a good reminder. I will do that today. Uh, I will follow up because I agree with you. That's annoying. That's horribly annoying. Uh, and the app looks too good and we put too much money as a, as a company into de developing it and all that stuff for you to have to not have that option. Okay. Um, Brian Ashcraft went to the inner squad game the other day. I'll say this Drew Bianco looks like he is built solid on the short side for first, but Mason Katz was solid. We will see. Um, and the thing about Katz is Katz could hit. 
So, and, and Katz had a good glove at first. Remember, Katz was, came to LSU as a catcher. Um, I guess Bianco could catch. Actually, Maneri said he feels like Bianco will end up being a catcher in pro ball. But in high school, you know, his brother was older than him and his brother was catching. And he didn't want to compete against his brother for a spot, so he played infield. Um, uh, so, I'm interested. I, you know, I don't know. I think ultimately, whoever hits is going to play first base. If that's Bianco, if it's Beloso, if it's Duga, like whoever ultimately hits is who's going to win that job uh, at first, as long as they don't throw up on themselves defensively. Uh, I just don't think you're going to have a plus defender at first this year. Oh, you want Emma Ducks. Okay. Thank you for coming to let me know. And he runs back in time. He runs in here. Emma Duck, Emma Duck. And then runs back. He's like a puppy. Uh, Matt Boyles, good morning. Brian, like the Miami football team, they play 30 minutes away from the university. Talking about Kentucky basketball. It's not that far, but it is strange. Steven Miller, what's up, man? Justin Huckins, Eric Ingeman, good morning. Grant Veon, good morning. Stuart Reithmeyer, good morning. Matthew Rogelio, morning, Matt and Drew. I know this is a fairly monumental basketball game tonight, but we're getting so much closer to baseball. Um, no doubt. And, you know, they played that round robin this weekend for baseball. So... Uh, I think the game I'm most interested to see is, is game number two because I want to see Landon Marceau. Uh, he'll get the, he'll face Army in game two. Um, so ULM Friday against you know, Hess against ULM, um, and then Marceau game two. I mean games two and three honestly like there's so much intrigue right. So it's like can Hess regain the form that he had for the bulk of last year before he kind of fell off the table? Can he be more efficient with his pitches? Um, Landon Marshall, will he live up to the hype? And then on Sunday, Eric Walker, you know, welcome back. Um, a lot of intrigue this weekend. So, really excited about, about some baseball out the box. Boyer Derice, good morning. Uh, Kirk Taylor, that investor report on the barber was just crazy. <laughs> uh, Daniel Gidry, Andrew Mack, good morning. Uh, Brian Rubber, the Riots, Y segment is pure gold. Second best weekly guest. Uh, with Mike D being the GOAT. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. The thing we have to figure out with Terrio, and by the way, oh, good reminder, the Riot Podcast today with yours truly and Ryan Terrio. So a noon Central Time on the 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge Facebook page. We'll be live on Facebook at noon Central. And if you miss it, you can go back and watch or listen later. I tweet out the links all the time, post it here and all, on the Facebook page and everything. Um, but, okay, so now, th now that's interesting. So Brian says he digs the Nora Jones song. So we used Don't Know Why as the bed music for that. But that seemed to be the thing everybody panned. They liked the segment. They didn't like the song. So we're going to try a different song today for the podcast. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll give it a few other, a few other options. Let's see. Craig, so if we start hot and can keep up the pace, we should have a shot tonight. I'm wondering if we'll be able to force turnovers and get second chance points. Um, I think the bigger question, so physically, Kentucky is the closest thing to LSU's physical equal. Uh, Calipari recruits a lot of length and a lot of size. Um, they got Reed Travis there, who is... What do you want? Elma Duck. Elma Duck. Okay, let's see Elma Duck. Here we go. Was he fired up? Um, you know, so like, uh, sorry, uh, comments. Anyway, so. P.J. Washington is, is 6'8", 230. He's playing really well this year. Um, he leads him in points and rebounds. Uh, they got Reed Travis, who was, um, you know, all Pac-12 at Stanford, who transferred as a grad transfer to Kentucky. I guess was a good player, won the chance to win. Um, hi. Oh, my sweet boy. 
can always hug your daddy. Um, the the thing is, like both both teams are. Happy birthday, Elma Duck. Dad huh? show. Dad, this is Dad show. Um, it is Dad show. You say good morning. Can you say hi? Mommy. Mommy went in her car to work. That's true. That's the thing that happened to IRL. Go work. Huh? Uh, Garage. Uh, well, colors. Oh, colors. Well, you can watch Colors today when Mommy gets home from work and you wake up from your nap. You can watch Colors. How about that? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Go watch all my ducks. See you later. Have a good day. So, LSU averages about five points more per game than Kentucky. Kentucky's at 78. LSU's at 83 points a game. Uh, defensively, though, Kentucky's like eight points better. They only allow 65 a game. LSU allows 73. Kentucky's just a better defensive team than LSU, and that's kind of LSU scores a little bit better. Kentucky is a better defensive team, so it's kind of like what gives is LSU able to score at their at their pace, um, or does Kentucky get stops? You know, um, start to find out. It'd be, tonight will be fun for that reason. Uh, Jerry DeLucky, how great is it that LSU basketball is relevant and baseball is about to get cranked up? I love it. I mean, you know, for I say it all the time, like, of course, as someone who, who wants all the teams to do well, but the flip side of it is as a talk show host. And this is why, like, I try to explain to people why Baton Rouge is a great, not a good, a great sports talk radio market. Because you have so much, so because of the population crossover with Baton Rouge and New Orleans, you have so much interest in both LSU football and the Saints. So start if you start in the fall, right? You have so much interest in both college and NFL team, like passionate interest in both. Once you get to the end of football season, you LSU basketball and the Pelicans overlap. So you have a college basketball team and an NBA team overlapping. And you have interest in both. And obviously you heightened interest in the Pelicans now because of what's going on. And last year they were actually good and they had Boogie. So you have a, a, a couple year run here where you had Boogie and you know, and they were making the playoffs and now the AD stuff. And also you've had a, a little run here where it's been you know, relevant. Um, and then they're in LSU baseball starts. And LSU baseball is probably Baton Rouge is is I would assume the maybe one of two or three markets in the country where you can talk baseball on the radio and get numbers like people want to hear it uh, college baseball I mean and if LSU is good that carries you all the way through June if they go to the College World Series and meanwhile you have spring football you have the NFL draft you have spring football you have, basketball carries you through if the Pelicans make the playoffs to run through you know through May or June like they did last year, awesome. Um, so you have all of this to talk about to you know to June. If LSU baseball takes you to the end of June, you basically got two weeks in July. Then it's SEC football media days, and then the next week after that, the Saints report. The next week after that, LSU reports. I mean, it's just like there's never that two or three month lull which a lot of markets go through. Um, it's you know. Oh Elma Duck, thank you. So anyway, I know that was a not exactly your your point in your question, but or comment, but that's why I, expl I explain this to people all the time. It, why why this is a great sports talk market? Like part of the reason that our shows have done so well and our station has done so well is because it's a great sports talk market and people crave attention about their teams and that never really slows down. Like there is, like I cringe when I hear people say the dog days of summer because there's just no such thing. There just isn't, you know. Uh, let's see. Hal Jubin, Trey Dykes. What's up, Trey Dykes? Good morning, bruh. Uh, Everett, Ice Cube and Eddie Murphy is looking for you. <laughs> they, they want their royalties, huh? Justin Mizell, Justin Beard. Yeah, they can take it out of my savings. Uh, Kirk, will LSU dominate the glass against Kentucky, man for man? How does how does they stack stack up? I think LSU can be competitive on the glass. They're not gonna they're not gonna do to Kentucky what they did to Auburn. They're not gonna do to Kentucky 
Bless you. Quack, quack, quack. You know what they did to Mississippi State. It's just, oh, there's, right. all right. There's too much size and length and athleticism in Kentucky. Like the two teams, I think their rebounding numbers are like right or like within one of each other. Um, yeah, LSU's at 38.4, Kentucky's at 39.0 per game rebounds. So, I mean, you're looking at, you're looking at kind of like a, a mirror image, you know. Um, I think both teams are similar. I think Kentucky's probably got a little bit, a little bigger size, you know, in the, uh, in the in the uh, in the backcourt. Um, but you're gonna you're gonna see, you're gonna see a game where Nas and Cavell are, are you banging bodies with guys that are similar size to them. It's just you know. Um, I'm interested to see. I don't think that they, they don't have Daniel Gafford, and that's that's encouraging because Gafford just owned LSU twice. Um, they got good bigs, but they don't have a Gafford. They don't have a lottery pick. Um, anyway, it's six eleven. Hey, use your words, Drew. Drew, use your words. I am trying to hear that. Andrew Brister, good morning. Stuart, your thoughts on the players entering the transfer portal? Um, so, we talked yesterday about Davin Cotton. Um, hi! And, and I, I do get it. If, if he wants to play... What? Can you use your words, please? Meow, meow. You want kittens? Yeah. You want kittens and her mittens? You want cats? <laughs> okay. Okay, you want cats? Yeah. Alright, Daddy, we'll show you cats. Go Fred Mart Cat. Fred Mart Cat. Alright, here's kittens and their mittens. There you go. All right. <laughs> Let's see. So, Stuart, like Davin Cotton going in the transfer portal, I don't blame him. Um, if he wants to play a lot in 2019, he'll, he can go JUCO or FCS and get on the field right away. There just weren't going to be many snaps for him at LSU in 2019 with Fajoko and Lawrence coming back. Um, if you figure at your three, four defensive end spots, Fajoko, Lawrence, Logan, Farrell, those are your, that's your two deep. At best, Davin Cotton is your fifth end, at best, this year. Now, long term, you know, next year, Fajoko and Lawrence graduate, you've got, you know, Farrell, Logan, and then all the rotational spots are open. Theoretically, Cotton would be, would be in that mix to play a ton in 2020. But if you don't want to wait, I get it, man. Um, I don't think it's a great move long-term for him. Um, but if he's looking to go to a lower level and play in 2019, like he wants to go to Southeastern and play, or play, go Juke around play in 2019, you know, it's a good move. Sometimes guys just want to get on the field and go play. That's what you know, Lowell Narcisse wanted to do. He just, he went Juco so he could go play football because he didn't get to play his senior year. He sat his first year at LSU. Like, he hadn't played football like three years. So he just wanted to go somewhere and play. So I get it. Yeah. Uh, James Seymour. I'm watching in Landscape View from Facebook. Cool. Yeah, it's it's our um, – He's he was talking about our app, our radio station app. Um, okay, cool, Matt. I'm going to follow up for sure. Um, hey, Matt, do me a favor. If you're still watching, email me so I can, I'll copy you on an email. So as a reminder, matt at 1045ESPN.com. Just email me about the, uh, the landscape of matt at 1045ESPN.com. Greg Lorman, do you know who will be starting on the mound Friday? Zach Hess. Yeah, so Hess, Marceau, Walker is your Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You know, and uh, uh, until further notice, until something were to change. Carly Cat, good morning. Uh, Carl, congrats on your appointment to the LSU Fan Council. Remember, free tickets. Free parking, free beer. Nothing else is acceptable. Uh, let's see. Shelby, I don't think LSU wins tonight. I just hope they compete. Tonight is a huge stepping stone for the program under Will Wade. 
Yeah, I mean, look, there's a re- there. It's hard to win on the road. Kentucky's playing as well as anybody in the country right now. Um, I do think Will Wade could out X and O John Calipari. Um, I think the teams are similar in that. You know, Will's doing right now what Cal typically does, which is recruit a really talented roster of young people and then get them to jail as the okay. season goes along. Okay. Okay. I love you. I love you. Cats. Are you watching cats? Are you watching cats? Cats in their hats. Cats in their hats. Cats in their hats. What, are you leaving me? I walk. What? Walk? Okay. You can go. Off you go. Bye. I'll take my brief intermittent snuggles when I can get them. I'll take them. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Ear fine. Good morning. Kerry Tomplay, Rusty Setatal. Good morning. Uh, Chad Nelson, they can win tonight if they stick together and not get intimidated by the environment. Um, Colby Hester, Mark Simino, Kevin Scarbo, Brian Myers. Good morning again. I don't think it's... Um, I just don't think the environment is the thing. I, I think Kentucky's length and athleticism and shooters and, you know, talent, like that's the thing that could overwhelm them. Um, yeah, I think they've been much better at handling. Hi! Dad Show! Hi! Hi. Uh, you watching Dad Show? Go Fred Martet. Well, I bet Mimi's going to take you to Fred Martet later. If you're a good boy. Right? Good morning. Good morning. That's good morning. Drum. Or good morning. What? Drum. Clap pans, clap pans for. Drum. Drums comes home. Drums plays clap pans for to be alone. Okay. Huh? Okay. See you later. Uh, trivia. Lane Kiffin blasting the transfer portal saying it's not a good thing. I understand why a coach would say that. Because um, coaches don't want their players to go anywhere. Uh, but... I am going to be very pro player, pro student athlete. So if in entering the transfer portal, that allows a kid, teams to contact a kid to see where the interest may be, I'm in favor of that. It gives him more options, lets him know better what his options may be as opposed to it's black or white. You either transfer or you don't. And if you transfer, then you got to hope that somebody wants you and, and it's a good landing spot. You know, you could enter the transfer portal and decide... I don't like any of the options I have. I want to stay where I am. Cool. I'm. I'm just. I'm going to be more pro student athlete. Um, they get the short end of the straw on too many things. So any ways that that they get advantages, I'm. I'm in favor of. It. Hi. I understand also for coaches why that's tough because you're trying to maintain a roster. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Hey, can you say good? M m morning, morning. Gamagin. Or gamagin, gamagin. We'll stick with that. Gamagin is close enough. Go Fred Market. You are gonna go to Fresh Market with me, me. Listen. F f Fresh m m mark ket. Fresh market. Fresh Marquette. Bye. Bye. Where are you going? Mwah. Mwah. Where are you going? To Fresh Marquette. You can go to Fresh Marquette. Mwah. Mimi's going to take you to Fresh Marquette. Elmo. Elmo. What? Bye, bye. You like my bra cat? Bye, bye, black sheep. Bye, bye, black sheep. Twinkle. What? what? Twinkle? Are you singing Twinkle? You want to sing Twinkle? Mommy's car. Mommy's car. Did you go for a ride in Mommy's car yesterday? You did? Elevator. Ooh, you went to the elevator yesterday? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. H-E-B. H-E-B. We did go to H-E-B in Houston, Texas. Elevator. Uh, let's see. Danny Brabham. Good morning. Jordan Grace. How many years until Pelicans moved to Vegas or Seattle? Ten. I gotta get going. Uh, Jordan, not as long as Gail Benson's the owner. Like 
she's not moving the team. They have a lease with the city until 2024, and she's a New Orleans gal, and she ain't moving the team. Now, when Gail Benson dies, what happens with ownership, that's interesting. But the team's worth $1.2 billion. Ben, Tom Benson bought it for $384 million. I mean, they've quadrupled the investment on the team already. Like, she's got cash, you know, liquid. She's worth $2.7 billion. Like, she ain't got to move to Seattle. Um, and I think she's committed to making it work in New Orleans. And when she dies, then you got a question. But as long as she's the owner, it ain't going nowhere. Uh, Gary Wall, good morning. Um, Blaine Allen, Carrie Hughes, good morning, Carrie. Johnny Clark, good morning. Craig Duga, I haven't kept up with Kiffin. Is his Twitter troll game still on point? It is. Wayne Ferguson, good morning. Don Jolabot, when's Drew starting his new school? We're gonna try. We're gonna try some uh, some summer if they if they have a class available for him in the summer. We're we're gonna try that. Mommy. Just sort of like you know, like a little half day, just to kind of get him you know acclimated, uh, and then hope in the fall I think he, he'll he'll uh, start start there you know more like full day. Uh, hey, Cheryl, good morning. Jackson Carney, Matt PSG versus Man United in the Champions League today. Who you got? Uh, I have no idea what that is. Uh, Craig Duga, uh, same, but I think we have a legitimate shot. Whereas I couldn't say that in the past. Tootie, Shelly, Melanson, what's up, Ronnie Duga? We are at the end of our comments. You want to say bye? We're at the end. Let's tell everybody about Brock. Remember, it's, it's Morning Scone presented by... Brock, very good. The Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic, they're tagged in this post. Bye. So if y'all do your boy a solid, Bye. that's like the biggest thing you can do for me. You can go, when we're done, tag, tap on the Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic um, tag in this post on their page and go like their page. That's a huge, huge help. I appreciate that very much. Uh, Michael Buchanan, good morning from Atlanta, the ATL. Uh, and of course, if you got bumps and bruises, bless you, need uh, for an, uh, an orthopedist, Go see our friends at uh, the Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. Remember, they can uh, do everything there in-house. They can do your imaging. They can do your x-rays. They can get you fitted for a walking boot or crutches. And they got awesome docs as well. And Drew goes to see Brad Collado there. They have pediatric uh, orthopedists as well. So go see Brad Collado if your kiddo needs uh, an orthopedist. Drew has these little braces he has on his, like, on his feet that go in his shoes. So. Are right, we ready to say bye to everybody? You ready? Bye. You say bye? Mimi's car. Well, you're going to go in Mimi's car later to Abilities and then to Martin. Fresh Martin. Yes. Okay. You're going to say bye? Okay. Let's say bye. Let's say bye. Let's say bye. Wow. Bye. Come sing. True. Can we say bye? Bye. Bye. Blow a kiss? Mwah. Oh, I blew your kiss. Mwah. Bye. Have a good day.